Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at how Scholacy can identify potential quality indicators in papers that can help you distinguish good quality studies from perhaps those of lesser quality. Now, I don't want to be rude about anyone's paper in this presentation, so I'm going to look at this purely in relation to the papers that I've published myself, because I'm quite happy to be rude about my own papers and I know what's wrong with those papers. Um, so let's just have a look at some of those. Um, the first one is a paper published when I was doing my diploma on the therapeutic use of video games. It's a review paper and it has about 30 citations. This is a preprint published about a piece of software I was developing during my PhD and it has about 15 citations. This is a peer reviewed conference paper uh, about a process I developed during my PhD, but it has no citations. This is a review article I published during my PhD and it has about 160 citations. This is an experimental piece of work um, I developed during my PhD, published in the Journal of Biomedical Informatics, peer reviewed, and it has about 25 citations. So let's see what Scholacy makes of each of these. So I've got the first one here on the therapeutic use of video games, the review paper. Um, so we get our flashcard format, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, but I wanted to draw your attention to a few specific areas, the comparative analysis section in particular. So what comparative analysis does is pull out the sections of the paper where the author is looking at comparing and contrasting the current work with previous work. Uh, in the case of a review paper, this also can mean comparing and contrasting between studies reviewed in the paper. So let's have a look at that. So what Scholacy has done is automatically identified where this comparison is taking place in the, in the paper and highlighting and classifying these statements according to whether it's talking about things being confirmed, claims being uh, contrasted, counterpointed, or just research generally building on previous research or maybe just differing from previous research in some way. <clears throat> so you can see the first um, block of comparative analysis talks about um, how this um, study by Newman is in line with the premise of um, the current paper and also previous research by these guys. Uh, we can, if we wish, which is something we can't do in the original PDF, is actually mouse over this article and get some metadata about it. So we can get information from site.ai about other people that have cited this. And we can also get the key findings of this paper from Scholacy. So Scholacy will go away and read this paper and pull out a quick summary of it. So we can read it in situ without having to leave where we are. So there's only three paragraphs of comparative analysis. So, you know, reasonable amount, but it could be better. The other thing that we've got here, though, is a discussion of future work. So there's a, a, a couple of sentences about um, how this research could be built on and improved in future. So there are two quality indicators here in this paper. Let's look at something quite different. Let's look at the paper that I think is quite a low quality paper. It has no cit citations. Um, and in relation to that, we can see that Scholacy has not identified a comparative analysis in this paper. And that's true, I didn't really talk about, I didn't really cite many other works in this paper, and I didn't really talk about how this study builds on or contrasts with any previous work. And so that comparative analysis is missing from this study. So there's a big missing quality indicator there. To be fair, I do talk about future work, but it's only just a sentence talking about what we could do here. This particular study was looking at automated methods for, uh, funnily enough, quality assurance um, for ontologies. Can we automatically process ontologies and have some kind of quality measure for them? Um, but the uh, community didn't think this was very good and nobody cited it. And I don't think it's very good either. But let's look at um, a medium quality paper that was published um, and see what Scholacy makes of that. Well, you know, here we've got our first checkbox. We've got a comparative analysis, which is great. Uh, this is a paper that looked about... Um, providing a system or developing a system and a, a method for identifying chains of co-reference in clinical research notes. And you can see 
in this paper, I talked quite a lot about previous research in terms of uh, you know which studies it builds on. So it builds on this study here, and, and it builds on on this study here, and then it talks about it in discussion to previous work by these guys, and building on previous work by these guys. So there's quite an extensive comparative analysis, and we've got mouse over links for all these citations, so we can click on those and go and find those papers and just have a look, or we can click on this to get a summary of that paper, which is great. Um, what other tick boxes do we have for our quality indicators? Well, we have a consideration of limitations, which is important. All studies should consider their limitations. Uh, these aren't always, though, uh, appearing in, the, in their own section in the paper. Sometimes the discussion of limitations is buried deep within the paper in the discussion section. But Scholars is very good at highlighting and pulling out that information wherever it occurs. And so we've got that there. And we've also got a discussion of future work and we've got a couple of paragraphs about that. So these are two more plus points to this article that it's got these quality indication, indicators of future work and limitations. Let's look at um, a non-peer-reviewed piece of work. What quality indicators do we have here? So this is one that's cited a few times, not massively. What quality indicators does it have? Well, it only has one. There's only one paragraph in the comparative analysis but to be fair, it talks about how uh, we evaluated our performance against previous research by these guys on the same data. And we did consider future work, but there's no discussion of limitations, which is a shame. I don't know why I didn't do that in this paper, but to be fair, I did talk about future work. So this is an okay-ish paper, and maybe that's reflected in the number of citations it has, which is about maybe 25. Um, but when we look at... Um, my, my, my most highly cited paper, uh, we can see that it has more of these quality indicators that were missing from the previous one. So uh, unlike the previous one, it does have a discussion of limitations. Uh, in the same vein as the previous one, it does have a discussion of future work, which is good, although it's only a single sentence. But we have a more extensive comparative analysis than the previous paper. So as this is a review article, it's more about as much as comparing and contrasting studies reviewed in the paper as it is with the methods implement, implemented in this review itself. So we can see that we're building on previous research by Song because we've uh, followed their method in defining a process-oriented healthcare system um, in this way. But we can see how it's differing from previous research because we're not considering any measures on clinical practice as recommended by these guys. Um, we found some differences in terms of the way stuff was reported different to these guys here and so that's highlighted there. So we've got a reasonable number of comparative analysis but perhaps not as extensive as it could be and uh, we've got discussion of limitations and future work. So I hope that this um, review, this presentation, gave you some insight into how Scholarcy can identify these indicators and how you can explore them when you're looking at papers and reviewing papers side by side to determine how reliable the claims are in the paper because it's important that a paper considers its, res its results in line, how it fits in line with previous work that's gone before it. So the, the more I would argue that the more extensive the comparative analysis, as in this paper here, uh, means that the paper is perhaps better quality than one that has fewer or completely missing comparative analysis sections. Now, I just want to be clear that there isn't a separate section in the paper itself called comparative analysis. What Scholarcy is doing is pulling out information from the paper and classifying it as comparative analysis. And it's saying that, yes, this is this tick box. You can check that um, the author has at least considered these things in different ways. So uh, please do explore papers yourself in Scholarcy Library or Scholarcy Flashcard Generator and let us know what you think. Thanks very much and chat to you soon.